Hi, I'm Norma Shepard, Director of the Mobile Millinery Museum. We're Canada's Hat Museum. We travel around doing retrospective millinery fashion shows, vintage fashion exhibits, and installations. Of course, during the pandemic, we have been handicapped a little bit and locked down. So this has given me time to work on the archives, to acquire new pieces. And um, I thought I'd pull a few old hats that are new to me, just to show you um, a bit of a selection of some summer straws and how they might differ in their construction and the type of straw. The first one I want to start with has been in our archives for a while. This was donated to us some uh, years ago. Often people come up to us when we do our vintage uh, retros retrospective millinery fashion shows and have hats to donate. And this was one such piece. And the great thing about that is we are able to, um, we're able to glean a lot of information about uh, precise details about the hat itself, who may have worn it, um, what era it is from, although we can guess at those things and we can make some pretty educated guesses. It's wonderful to, to actually get some, some verification. So this was given to us by a woman who said the original owner was an ambassador's wife and that she wore this in the 30s. Now, straw hats, of course, very popular before the days of air conditioning. Um, and of course, during the days when you were expected to wear a hat, if you were a lady, going to any occasion socially at all. So this would be quite appropriate. Now, the straw itself is a very fine straw. It's Milan straw. It would have come to the milliner or the um, artisans who were making the basic form of the hat uh, in a bale and that straw would come off the bale and be sewn in concentric circles from the center crown to create the crown and similarly would be sewn um, to create the brim and then they're joined together. Beautifully joined in this instance with green velvet and the hat pin is exquisite as well. Simply used decoratively but I will link to another video I've done on whether or not hat pins were used as weapons at any time. Now, I do not have a maker's mark or label for this hat, and very likely it may have been custom made. Beautiful Milan straw. Now, a very different straw from a different era, and this is circa 1950, is this uh, two types of straw, actually which have been alternated to form what looks like an oval or to me almost a football field shape. I'm giving away my um, tiger cat fanship and of course the blue and white is not are not tiger cat colors but I'm going to stop there and tell you that the inside of this hat has little prongs wire prongs that are covered in velvet and that's how you secure the hat. So this is very simply made, but it is what's called a Dior dish. Uh, Christian Dior had his millinery designer create this style circa 1947 to go with his new look. The very um, structured bodice, uh, tight waist, full skirted crinoline dresses that uh, comprised his new look circa 1947. It was a very popular style. Uh, for several reasons, of course, it complemented the full skirted styles which prevailed throughout the 50s, but also this is a very close hat. You didn't need to worry once you put it on. You know, if you're getting in and out of a car, this is going to be fine. It's, you know, you don't have a high crown that's going to give you trouble getting in and out of the car. This um, would probably require a very simple little hat pin just to secure it to the top of your head. But you can see what a different um, different type of straw this is compared to the Milan and would have taken certainly less time to create. Now another hat that is made from a very fine straw is this little early piece. Very early 1930s, I would say. The underbrim is made from a very coarse heavy phi fabric in the navy. The trimming is a little very old ostrich feather which is secured with a little pin 
often you will find pins and jewelry um, on some early hats. And just look at the, diff the shaping of the crown. So this is shaped almost the way you might want to block a felt hat. So that's an early piece. And of course the crown and the brim were made separately and then attached. Now yet another type of straw is what we call a cellophane straw. Sometimes these were called a wood straw. Now there's some interesting trims on this hat, some very early um, fabric flowers, a satin bow, and then we have a sort of a falling apart, what we call a made bird. And made birds were something that milliners created by pasting together some feathers and things to create what looked like a bird uh, at a time when the it was considered, you know, um, environmentally incorrect to be continuing to use exotic birds for millinery. So oh, we've even got some thistles on this hat. Of course, a lot of these hats from early days were trimmed by the original owner. You could, if you lived in major cities in America or Canada, you could go to shops, emporiums, where there were rows and rows and rows of feathers, flowers, fruit, all types of different trims, ribbons for your hat. And there were gentlemen there who could tell you what the latest styles were from Paris, and they would guide your purchases. Probably guide you to the expensive stuff, right? Anyway, it's kind of interesting, the design of this hat interior, because it has an inner partial crown which would hug your head and help secure this hat on. You know, this would be worn on a tilt. Think Easter Parade. Um, some of the <laughs> some of the hats in that in that wonderful film. So that's a cellophane straw. Now a ribbon straw from a later decade, 1960s is what was used to make this hat and the straw weave in this is quite wide and it has been folded and stitched to create the shape of the crown and then it has been curled the ribbon has been shaped and curled to perform to form medallions on the brim the medallions look like roses actually so this is from the late 1960s when Hairdressers were giving us bouffant hairstyles, and the high crown on this hat would have sat quite nicely on, on a beehive style. Now, I've said before that what a lot of people don't realize is you couldn't always find a red hat. You sure can find them nowadays with the Red Hat Society, but even they never didn't realize that um, they were scarce in the early decades of the 20th century and throughout the Victorian era because it was considered that if you were wearing a red hat, maybe you weren't wearing any knickers. So I cast no aspersions on the original owner of that hat. Now here's a really interesting one. And this, again, is a cellophane straw braid which has been folded onto a netted base. Maybe you can see that there. And it's been folded and shaped to create a kind of a clamshell style hat. This is from the late 1940s. It would sit at the back of the head and hug the head. There is a label here, but it has faded. So I suspect the original owner might have worn this hat quite a bit. Maybe even loaned it out to friends. So pretty with the, um, with the blue fabric flowers. Would have sat like this. Sort of a bonnet-like, very, very sweet. Now another sweet piece, and this is the last one I'm, I'm going to show, is a very fine straw, once again, similar to the Milan straw, but this is so, um, so beautifully uh, created. It almost, once the straw has been 
banded together. I'll show you the interior. Again, you can find the starting point. It's almost like material. It's so malleable. And you can see that the brim has been formed by tucking, almost ruching, almost making uh, ruffles of the straw. And then we have a little bit of little bit of chenille dot veiling and some wonderful representations in fabric of lilies. So this tells me that this this probably was a uh, maybe an Easter hat, hence the lilies. And the label is Peacock Mode. If anyone is familiar with that label, I'd love to know. I'm thinking that's the backwards. What am I doing? Well, anyway, you get the idea. So this, now these hats would sit slouched to the side. It's a style that was popular in the 1930s, this type of sort of slouch look. But this particular hat was made in the 1950s. And it sits pretty secure, but you could have, you could have given it a little extra help with a, with a pin in the back. So that's just a little quick look at some straw hats. If you're interested in this type of content, please let me know in the comments. Maybe there's, uh, maybe you have some questions, some pieces of your own you found in Granny's Attic that you'd like to have dated, or maybe you've found them in a thrift store. Um, if you're interested in more on how to date hats, how to find some good pieces when you're out in the wild, let me know. I'd be happy to cover lots of topics. And uh, in the interim, subscribe, like, share, and have a really happy day.